Hey everybody, so in the last video, uh, I had this little uh, two ships docked together. Um, one is the command pod, one is basically a transfer rocket at this point, but we need a little lander. So we're going to go and build a new rocket. There we go. And we're going to build a lander. Now, this lander, we could build it with the capsule, or we can build it with um, a probe. Since we're sending people down to the moon, we do not need a parachute because uh, the moon doesn't have any gravity. But we do need to add two key things. Some fuel, an engine, an RCS system, and some landing legs, which are down here. One and two. So this is a very basic lander. Now, instead of putting a parachute on the top, we are going to go and go to other, and again, grab a docking port. And this is going to be our lander, and we need to put it into space. Again, 20 tons. So, very simply, we can go at this. Now, because we are going to the moon, I'm going to switch it up a little bit, because I do want to show you guys that you can do this. And we're going to do it here. We're going to add a little booster stage to it. Um, part of the reason we're doing this is because to make the lunar transfer orbit, um, we need a little bit more fuel than what we have. Um, so we're going to uh, add this in to get us there a little bit faster. Guess some other reason we're doing this is because all this stuff here, we're going to lose velocity in the lower atmosphere because of aerodynamics. So we just want to uh, make it that uh, we get through the lower atmosphere as soon as possible and ideally get this into space so that we're only using this for um, orbital maneuvers. Once again, we're going to launch the rocket, but before we do that, we're actually just going to, and you can do this on the build screen, which is better, make sure that we stage that because we want to break that apart at the same time. If we don't, it ends up causing the rocket to tilt left or right. This one took a little longer than uh, ideal, and we got to our thing. Now, this is just a few meters per second, so I'm just going to use the RCS uh, to make this maneuver rather than the engine, um, mainly because just to show you can do it. And we want some pretty accuracy. And again, since I have this, I can see the closest approach is this. So try to. There we go. Um, And then again, I'm going to time warp all the way over here. So I'm almost to the approach, but not quite. There we go. Use the RCS system to push the lines together again, like I did before.
you hear that I'm a little head. And there we go. So again, I'm traveling much faster than the um, target, which we should see right there. There it is. So first thing I want to do is I want to slow down. We're actually going to pass really close to it. Try to correct the orbit. Coming into dock, we'll use the RCS system that we're going to turn back on because if we hit something, that's not good. And we're just going to use it to slow us down so that we get on target, but also that we don't hit it too fast because you can break things very easily in this game if you hit them with too much velocity. There we go. slowing down just okay this should be good enough and we're going to nudge it and we want to just make the correction and there you go and then we're going to turn off the rcs system because we can rely on this now one thing to be aware of when you're doing this is you do want to make sure you turn off the engines you don't need otherwise when you turn on the ignition here um, you'll have all three engines firing and this will just go absolutely bonkers so we have our ship, it's in orbit here, so we're going to call this now, rename it to Lunar Explorer. Why? Because it's always good to name your ships instead of having them called Rocket, because when you go from this to this, it's a good idea to have an idea of what all this is. Otherwise, you're going to be hunting forever. So here's the moon, and we're going to navigate to it. And you can see here that... Uh, Again, we have a transfer window come up. Um, for this to work, we're going to time warp again, just shy of the transfer window. And this gives us time to correct for our orientation. And the orientation is always going to be forward to whatever engine you happen to have turn on, um, or if all the engines are off, I think it's based on um, which engine potential you have. So there you go. Now that we're aimed in the right direction, we're going to go here. And we're going to see it come up to about 600 something. There you go. And we're going to engage the engine. And we're going to hope that the fuel in the engine is enough to give us time. Which it might not be. Okay. So in this case, we do have a slight problem. Uh, the This entire thing is empty. You can see here. So we actually don't need it anymore. We're just going to toss it. Um, and to ensure that we get it, we're just going to rotate. Oops, bumped a bit. That's okay. And we're going to use the actual spacecraft engine here. Part of the reason we're doing this is that leaves all that weight behind. We don't need it. Um, so there we go. So we'll finish the rest of the lunar transfer orbit with... Uh, the lander engine, and then we'll transfer fuel between them, because obviously I don't want to land with no fuel. Now the numbers are gone, we're going to reduce how much engine output we have, and we're going to go until we get to about, oops, uh, we went too far. So we're going to use the RCS, pull it back slightly. It is a bit jumpy, but that's pretty good. And we're going to time warp here. Now, again, because I have a mod on, it's going to stop me at the edge of uh, any intersect. But we'll just tell it the time warp again. And there we go. At this point, we're going to rotate because we need to slow down. Um, we're not doing a flyby. We are trying to land on the moon. So 
quick rotation and we're going to uh, fire in the retrograde to slow us down. about so just shy of uh, 5,000 meters because that's when the uh, you have to not be able to use time warp and I'd like to reduce our velocity as much as possible and we're going to land at that crater so we're going to bring this side down and because the names are here we'll just go and as long as it doesn't too much below 500. Okay, there you go. And now we're going to time warp here. And at some point it's going to stop us. There we go, because we're at 5,000. And at this point, we're just going to wait for the thing. Again, I'm going to time accelerate it for the video. Because we're going to try to land at, I think, the Sea of Tranquility. Why? Uh, because we can. Okay, so we're above the Sea of Tranquility. We're going to transfer all the fuel to, well, almost all the fuel to the lander. We'll leave a little bit in the tank just for orbital maneuvering. And we're going to say goodbye to the command capsule. And here we go. Get us out of the way. we're going to slow the capsule down. And you can see here quickly that our uh, velocity, and you can see here that our transfer line is getting, and then as we drop below 5,000, we'll switch to the vertical mode, uh, which makes landing easier. And you'll see that we now have the arrows indicating our velocity. So all we're trying to do right now is burn off as much of the horizontal velocity as possible. Turn off our CSS right now. And there we go. That's pretty good. And you can see here that we're landing mm, more or less the Sea of Tranquility. So we're going to rotate the rocket into a more of a vertical position. In fact, we want to try to get it as vertical as possible. We want to extend the landing legs. Now we want to land about 5 meters per second, but it's important to note that we don't want to necessarily do a down burn the whole way. So we're going to let it slide a bit because we have a big enough engine we can do this. I should at this point mention that landing is not my specialty. Um, there are people who are able to do this way more smoother than I am. So just realize that this is how I do it um, may not be the best way. the RCS system to correct for that last final bit of velocity and we're just basically waiting till we're about under a thousand I think that's probably good enough and then we're going to engage the engine and strip away all that velocity hopefully before we hit the ground nope Oops, a bit too high and then we want to just tag it in such that our velocity is relatively stable. If it's going down a bit, that's fine. Um, we don't want to run the engine the whole time. And if it does drop a little bit like this, we can always use the RCSs to pump it up a little bit. 
as we uh, get closer to the ground. And the moon is relatively easy to land on. Um, it's mostly flat, or there's some craters on it um, in most locations. So it's not too bad a place to land. Um, some of the other planets can get quite rocky. I know Venus is a major pain. I don't think there's a flat surface on Venus anywhere. Um, so you have to be cautious when you're landing to make sure you actually land flat. Um, particularly if you're planning on going back up again, because uh, the rockets will fall over and stuff like that. But for this, we're doing pretty good. We have plenty of fuel, and while yes, we can just use... Whoops. And if we need to, we can just use a little bit of boost. Okay, so just level off the orbit and we're coming in a little hot so we'll use the RCS system to get us down to under 5 meters a second which is generally a pretty safe um, landing speed for almost anything um, small. Again the bigger the rocket you have the more softer landing you need to avoid breaking things because there is a certain threshold they can handle. And come down here, and you can see here we just tap the brakes on a little bit with the RCS, and we come to a very nice, super soft landing. Turn off our engines, turn off the RCS, and then wait for the view of landed, the sea of tranquility. We can enjoy the sights, and we are going to enjoy the sights for a while because we need to wait for our craft to return us to Earth because it has essentially the parachute and everything else that we kind of do need uh, for entry to basically make its way around. Now we know that coming down it went this far so if we go over here I'm gonna say about right here is where we want to wait for it to come back. So we'll wait for it to come to about this point right here There we go. And now we're going to put ourselves back up to orbit. And hopefully by the time we get to orbit, this guy here will be there. Now note he is orbiting about 4,000 to 8,000 meters. So we'll aim for about 5 and see how we can do there. So not completely necessary, but we'll also tag this. And we'll boost up our throttle. And away we go. I'll do this with uh, the map mode because there isn't a huge amount of gravity. Anything we need to do is make sure our orbit is not super eccentric compared to what we're trying to get to. So that's probably good enough. We can't time warp, so we're just going to wait a little bit for it to go until we're above 5,000. There we go. And then it's going to flip the map. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a navigation point. We're going to want to navigate to those guys. It's going to tell us exactly how much we need to, to meet that. There we go. And our rendezvous point is where? Right here. And again, we're going to... This is not a great way of getting there, but that's okay. We're going to time warp around. Again, this is, I can make these better um, normally, but I'm just kind of trying to show what you can expect to see. Um, then here we're going to use the RCS system to make that final adjustment. I'll just decide to do that.
So there's our target. Oops. Coming in. Trying to determine. At this point, we're patiently waiting. Because we're under uh, 5,000 meters, we still have the orbital um, velocity arrows for landing aid instead of the regular arrow for which direction we're going. It makes it a little bit of annoyance um, in terms of trying to figure out where we're traveling, but that's okay. We're basically being very patient and waiting for us to catch up. Because we want to minimize the amount of fuel we're using. And the best way to do that is when we're close. Because then we can actually see what we're doing. And get a better idea of what adjustments we need to make as we get closer. So we just went to space. And it flipped the whole thing around. So we're actually now heading in this direction. We're going to engage the RCS and push the rockets together. And using the more efficient larger engine for the big moves and the RCSs for the smaller ones. And that's how you dock, kind of like a pro-ish. So now that we've done this, we're going to transfer all the fuel back from the lander that we apparently didn't need to bring with us and say, goodbye lander, we don't need you anymore, we're going back to Earth. Goodbye lander. We have fuel. Now you can see here that the docking ports do have some magnetism. So if you don't move out of the way, um, that could cause a problem. So we're going to turn the engine on. We're going to figure out our navigate to Earth. There's our transfer point. So we're going to go to here, rotate around. Oh, we're below 5,000 again, whatever. And we're going to leave the lander, return on RCSs to just get us a, far enough away that the, the engines don't go, but we have to be careful not to hit things and break anything because we do need that engine. Um, trying to do this with RCS alone, not good. And there we go. So we just need to wait until we get to our transfer point, which we're just going to time accelerate because I can for the tutorial. Coming up to that transfer point. And it's going to kick out a number. There it is, 162. And we are going to uh, accelerate to uh, figure the circle going out. And then... Oh. And then we'll use the RCSs to fix that. Fix it. There you go. Turn the RCS system off. And we see here that we're flying back to Earth. And we're going to time warp to here. All right, so now that we're here, we aren't quite hitting the Earth's atmosphere. So we're going to uh, utilize whatever fuel remains 
and bring that down to a terminal velocity. Now, if you actually run out of fuel or you have very little fuel, you can actually make a direct uh, earth descent without having to slow down. Uh, you just need to make sure you hit about 20 kilometers um, in order to slow down enough or you will take about like 20, 30, 100 um, orbits to slow down. So we're doing this just simply because we have the extra fuel. And this extra fuel is kind of the extra fuel we really didn't need uh, for this mission. But again, uh, always bring a little bit because you never know what goes wrong or if you have problems. Uh, very easy to uh, drain all your fuel. So we're almost finished draining all the fuel. I'm going to tag that because we're going to need that once we hit the atmosphere. And now we're out of fuel. Now one thing to note, um, especially one thing to note when you're coming into uh, a re-entry like this is eject the core either up or down. Don't eject it forward or backwards or it will run into you. So we're going to eject it like that. Make sure it goes up. It's going to burn up in a few seconds, but if you eject it forward or backwards, you run the risk of running into it or it running into yourself. There it goes. Okay, so we're now in a re-entry burn. This is pretty basic. Um, make sure the heat shield is facing the direction of your arrow um, and avoid having anything getting heated. That is not the heat shield. Again, even from directly from the moon, this would get to about three or four thousand degrees. Because we slowed down, we cut our heat shield. Uh, we cut the amount of heat on the heat shield by half. Um, obviously, we have to wait until two thousand five hundred. But just to give you a little secret here, these parachutes are pretty effective and very quick. Um, so you can actually wait a long time to pull them. I'm going to wait until about a thousand meters, just simply because, well, I don't want to have to wait that long for this to fall down. So parachute is half deployed as we finish the final landing. Fully deployed. And to the welcome to Earth. You can then recover the uh, capsule, which will log all your achievements. The ones that are bright white uh, are new achievements. The ones that are um, grayed out are ones that you've already done. So here you've reached low Earth orbit. Obviously, reaching low Earth orbit again doesn't get you additional points. And there's several of these in here because this was a multi uh, stage mission, so it combines all the different uh, mission objectives together, so sometimes you'll get items listed several times, but that's okay. And then we'll hit recovery. Then we'll exit to the space center, and you can see here that we've completed most of Earth's um, tasks in these missions. Uh, we're missing a uh, high Earth orbit, and on the moon we captured low Earth moon orbit and landed on the moon, so the moon is done, and we have the remaining mission achievements to do for future videos. Thanks for watching.